नमः ओम व्यासं वसिष्ठ नप्तारम शक्रे पौत्रमकलमशम पराशरात्मज वंदे तुकतातम तपो निधि व्यासाय विष्णुपा व्यासूपाय विष्णवे नमो वै ब्रह्म निदये वासीय नमो नम ओ नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती चो जय मुधीर वेलकम टू दी आदिपर्व दि बिगिनिंग ऑफ बिगिनिंग्स ऑफ महाभारत Mahabharata has 18 parvas. In each parva, there are many sub-parvas. So let us look at some of the sub-parvas. In fact, all of the sub-parvas of the Adi Parva: Anukramanika, Sangraha, Paushya, Pauloma, Astika, Adi Vamsavatarana, Sambhava, Jatugraha, Hidimbavatha, Bakavada. चैत्ररथ स्वयंवर वैवाहिक विदुरगमन राज्यलभ अर्जुन वनवास सुभद्रा हरण हरण हरिक खांडवध तो दीज आर दि एटीन सब पर्वा इन आदि पर्व डू ई नीड टू रिमेंबर ऑल दिस दिस ऑल सीम्स कॉम्प्लेक्स दट इज वन क्वेश्चन सो एज वी गो थ्रू दि स्टोरी लाइन i would suggest that uh, you listen to each talk at least twice because memory plays a very important role in today's educational system we think understanding is everything and rote learning or just memorization is considered uh, it's looked at condescendingly that is not a good approach i believe because understanding happens on the basis of memory what will you understand otherwise so memorization of the story line also becomes very very important because to be able to understand why a particular character acts a certain way in a certain time and context you would need to be able to relate it with previous actions and the previous story line and hence uh, memory plays a very important role in understanding why a particular character acts a certain way okay so anukramanika parva it's all it all starts with ugrashrava who is sauti sauti means a uh, one who has for his profession storytelling he is the son of lomaharshana he is welcomed by uh, kulapati kulapati means uh, the head the leader of the kula kulapati saunaka saunaka welcomes ugrashrava when he enters naimisha aranya naimisha forest aranya means forest ugrashrava is welcome and uh, all the uh, assembled rishis inquire about the mahabharat and that's how it starts so ugrashrava starts with uh, janamejaya snake sacrifice sarpa yagna sarpa satra during that yagna vyasa's disciple vyasa is present but vyasa's disciple vaishampayana narrates the entire mahabharata for the benefit of the audience vyasa is called krishna dvaipayana krishna means dark one dvaipayana means one who is born in a dvipa dvipa means an island so vyasa is the title given for a compiler of the vedas he compiles the vedas in fact we celebrate guru purnima 
in Sri Vyasa's memory. And this Mahabharata is supposed to be a discourse on important principles of right living, mainly the Purusharthas, the purpose of a human being, purpose of a person, Purusharta. So they are four in number, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. You will look at that in detail later. And this was originally called Jaya. Jaya means success. Tato Jayam Udhirayet. That means that after bowing down to Nara Narayana and Saraswati Devi, you should utter Jaya, success. Because it leads to success. It leads to cleansing of sins. What is meant by sin, you will look later. But we all encounter difficulties in our path. And how do we overcome them? We need the lamp of past experience. Not just our own, but our collective experience, which is in the form of Itihasa or history. So this was earlier called Bharata. Then when the Devas weighed Bharata on the one hand, and all the Vedas, the four Vedas on the other side of the scale, Bharata was found to be significantly heavier than all the Vedas put together. That's why it's said what is found here can be found elsewhere, what is not found here cannot be found anywhere. That's a very powerful statement. So Mahabharata, that, that's when it started call, getting called Mahabharata because it's a great story of Bharata. Then comes the Sangraha Parva. Sangraha Parva is like an overview of all the Parvas. But it starts out with the story of Samanta Panchaka. Samanta Panchaka is the lakes near which the war of Mahabharata was fought, the Kurukshetra. Samanta Panchaka has a very wonderful history. This said uh, Rama. Today is Rama Navami. Not this Rama, not Dasarada Rama, but Parashurama, another incarnation of the great Mahavishnu. Parashurama is also called the Bhargava. Bhargava means one in the one who is a descendant of Bhrigu. Pandava means a descendant of Pandu. Kaunteya means a descendant of Kunti. Likewise, Bhargava, Rama. Dasharada Rama is Raghava, descendant of Raghu, not Bhargava. So this is Bhargava Rama. So Bhargava Rama, he exterminated the Kshatriyas 21 times and all the blood he collected in pools of five lakes and he propitiated his ancestors. His ancestors said, stop this bloodshed now, we bless you. And he asked for a boon that let this place become a holy Tirtha, Tirtha Sthala, a place of pilgrimage. And that's how Samanta, uh, Samanta Panchaka became an extremely holy place. Then comes the Paushya Parva. Paushya is a king who is a contemporary of Janamejaya, a friend of Janamejaya. Janamejaya conducts a sacrifice in which his brothers ill-treat a dog which happens to be Sarama. Sarama is the uh, celestial bitch. Sarama's son. And hence Sarama curses Janamejaya saying you will find ill, Ill luck. Janamejaya is not happy with this curse. So he finds for himself a spiritual preceptor, a guru who is Somashrava, who is Shrutashrava's son. So Shromashrava has this habit of uh, giving anything that a Brahmana asks. When this condition is laid down to Janamejaya, he says no problem, let it be so. 
and hence Somashrava becomes the spiritual master of Janamejaya. Parallelly, there is the story of Ayodhya Dhaumya. Dhaumya has three disciples. Aruni of Panchala is one such disciple and he is sent to prevent the breach, the leak of water in the fields. He goes there, he tries hard, he does not succeed, so he places himself, his body right there and plugs the leak. Evening happens, they are all worried, the master comes to look for his disciple, he says, Ho oh, Aruni, where are you? Aruni replies, I am here master, I am plugging the breach in the water course, plugging the leak. The master is very happy. Okay, you are a very good student. I bless you that all, that all the Vedas and Dharma Shastras shine in you. And he sends him on his way. So he is graduated. That's his graduation day. Final test. Then comes uh, Upamanyu. Upamanyu is sent to take care of cattle. So he goes, takes care of cattle. When he returns back, he is still hale and healthy. So his master asks, how are you so fat, hale and healthy? Upamanyu simply responds by begging for food, bhiksha. So his master says, you should not uh, you know, eat of the food without submitting it to me. Whatever I approve of, you should do, not on your own. So Upamanyu does likewise, but still he is hale and healthy. His master asks, what now? Upamanyu says, uh, I beg a second time after giving it to you. You don't return it back to me. So I beg again. His master says, no, that's not right. Like that, his master curtails his movement until one day, uh, out of sheer hunger, Upamanyu eats arka leaves and goes blind. Then his master tells him to pray to the Ashwini Kumaras who give him, a, give him a cake and he offers that cake to his master and his master blesses him that let all the Vedas and Dharma Shastra shine in you and he regains his eyesight. He is successful in his endeavor. Then comes Veda. Veda likewise undergoes a lot of uh, tests and he is also successful. Veda acquires some disciples out of which one prominent one who is very important in the storyline is Utanka. Utanka is very well taken care of by his master because his master suffered at the hands of his master. He does not want to transfer that to his disciples. So Utanka has a very good time. He learns all the Shastras, is prolific. Then uh, Veda has to go out on an errand and he uh, makes Utanka in charge of his family, his household. During that time the women of the household feel that it is season and Utanka should satisfy their desire of having a child. Utanka refuses, Veda hears about this and is happy, he blesses Utanka. And when Uttanka says, I want to do something, I want to give a good Veda asks him to inquire with the, uh, you know, his wife, Veda's wife. So she asks for the queen's earrings. So Uttanka proceeds on his way to the king who happens to be Pausha. That's why the Pausha Parva. So he, uh, on his way, he encounters a huge man with a, on a huge bull. The man says, eat of this bull's dung and drink its urine. Uttanka does refuses. But the man says, your master did so. You also do so. So just to be obedient to his master, he does it, goes on his way, reaches Pausia's palace. Pausia says, uh, you can inquire of the queen if she is willing take it. 
so she he goes to the queen's quarters but he does not find anybody so he comes back he's a bit annoyed with the uh, king the king says uh, are you defiled utanga remembers yes and then he does archamana he cleanses himself with water and then again when he goes he perceives the queen the queen is so subtle she gives him his ear rings but tells him that uh, the naga king takshaka is behind these ear rings so be careful putanka on us when he is about to leave the king uh, says we have just ended a sacrifice be please have food and leave putanka agrees he has food but his food is cold and it's it has a hair he points this out to the king who gets angry how dare you impute this fault to me while well, this food served to you is of the highest quality nothing wrong in my kingdom happens and there is a mutual curse back and forth and utanka departs so utanka on his way back finds a beggar who appears on and off and when utanka has to uh, you know rest somewhere this beggar who is takshaka disguised takshaka is the naga king snake king the snake king takes away the earrings disappears into the ground now indra helps utanka which is with a thunderbolt vajrayuda and uh, utanka is able to pursue the naga king into the naga loka there he sees beautiful palaces and he uh, you know, he is a poet the trained vedic scholar so he praises the entire region all the nagas and so on they are all happy with it but still takshaka does not return the ear rings for which uh, there is a horse a man he asks utanka to blow into the horse and on blowing into the horse immediately the entire naga loka is a flame takshaka is frightened and he comes and returns the ear rings and utanka is able to immediately go and uh, give the ear rings to his guru's wife there is all deep meaning in all this we will look at that uh, as part of i will post the story detailed story and you can go through it utanka is unhappy with takshaka because he was about to be cursed by his guru's wife just because uh, of takshaka's interference so utanka actually goes to janamedia says your father was killed by takshaka and you have not taken revenge on him this is how janamedia is actually motivated to take revenge and hence he conducts the snake sacrifice this is how it begins this is paushya parva next comes the pauloma parva pauloma parva describes uh, the bhrigu's nini age so bhrigu marries puloma after which it is pauloma marries puloma and the rakshasa named puloma actually carries her away with agni as a sakshi puloma delivers in the meantime to chavana and chavana in a splendor burns the rakshasa into ashes so chavana rishi chavana prash you have heard of chavana prash Chavana is a very famous rishi who is the son of Bhrigu. Bhrigu on hearing this curses Agni to eat of everything until then Agni is the Agni conveys the sacrifice 
the offerings to the devas and hence he is considered pure if he eats everything if he burns everything then he is impure but brahma responds that uh, in eating everything you will make death pure you will purify everything that's why he is called a pavaka one who purifies so agni gets this because of uh, bhagu's curse so there is deep meaning in even each curse if you look at it then shavana and suganya nari they give birth to pramati pramati gives uh, has a uh, ruru for his son ruru has pramadwara has his wife whose son is sunaka sunaka's son is shaunaka who is the kulapati in naimishara so this is how the connection happens this is pauloma parva then comes the uh, astika parva astika is a very very important parva this actually shows how janamejaya's revenge on the snakes comes to an end through the rishi astika and how it is interconnected so as i explained in the beginning remembering the storyline becomes very very important being able to connect one with the other because then you clearly see the law of cause and effect actions have consequences you would be able to connect them only if you remember the context remember what led to what so in astika prava it is explained how the snakes who were children of kadru and kashyapa so kashyapa is a maharishi who is in fact considered the father of all the manifested beings so snakes eagles anything that flies anything that crawls all the animals all the human beings included all the devas asuras all these kashyapa kashyapa is supposed to be the parent of all these beings so vinata and kadru are two of kashyapa's wives who are daughters of daksha actually daksha had uh, married 13 of his daughters to kashyapa so vinata gives birth to aruna and uh, garuda kadru gives birth to thousands of snakes huge snakes and vinata and kash uh, kadru have you know look at a uh, once on a time they look at a horse whose uchai shravas uchai shravas actually comes out of the samudra mantana that happens between devas and asuras who take the help of vishnu mahavishnu in a kurma avatara as a tortoise and as they churn the ocean many things come up come out including deep poison kalakuta which is swallowed by shiva mahadeva and he called his throat becomes blue because of that poison so there is that's why he is called neela kantha neela means blue kantha is throat uchai shravas also comes out of this journey so uchai shravas is very beautiful horse so on seeing this vinata and kadru get into a sort of a debate vinata says this horse is white kadru says no no actually the tail is black now kadru wants her sons the snakes to invade the tail and make it appear black so that she can succeed in her uh, argument the snakes refuse and hence kadru actually curses them saying uh, 
you will be exterminated in a snake sacrifice and Brahma also approves because the snakes have become a big big menace to the entire earth they bite everybody they are venomous so they the snakes having been cursed do not uh, want to further infuriate their mother and hence uh, they go and make Ucheshrava's tail appear black and Vinata loses and the penalty for losing is that she has to be a slave and hence Garuda is born a slave she becomes a slave because of Aruna's Aruna who is the first son of Vinata his curse because Vinata in her anxiety and hurry opens the egg while it is half born half born so the half born Aruna actually curses his mother that you will become a slave to Kadru so these are all interlinked very interesting then Garuda you know, is a slave to the snakes they want of him Amrita having which they will free him and his mother Vinata so he goes to Indra Loka gets Amrita he defeats Indra but in the process gains Indra's friendship and he mentions uh, don't worry the snakes will not drink Amrita you can take it once I give it to them so he places them uh, places the Amrita on Darpa and asks the snakes to you know, finish their uh, bathing and cleansing and come have Amrita before then Indra comes and takes away the Amrita so Garuda and Minata are freed because they have brought the Amrita but the snakes don't have Amrita because Amrita is placed on Dharba, Dharba becomes very holy and on licking that the snake's tongues are forked that's when it's said that, that the snake's tongues get forked so in order to uh, help overcome the curse given to the snakes it is said by Brahma that a Rishi named Jaratkaru the son of that Rishi will be able to help you help overcome this curse so that Rishi is Jaratkaru he is a terrific tapasvi he encounters his ancestors hanging upside down and in terrible suffering and he asks of them why are you suffering they say that Jaratkaru does not have a son and hence we are suffering so he agrees to marry a wife of the same name now Vasuki the great Naga king his sister is also Jaratkaru so he gives his sister Jaratkaru in marriage to the sage Jaratkaru and the once on a time Jaratkaru feels insulted by uh, his wife and hence he decides to leave for which she asks what happens to a ch child he responds there is and hence Jaratkaru's son is named Astika Astika means there is because uh, his wife is not sure whether there is in her womb a child or not for which Jaratkaru has responded there is and hence Astika now Astika actually goes to Janamejaya's sacrifice and stops the Sarpa Yajna that is happening there with his wisdom, tremendous wisdom Janamejaya gives his words and Takshaka is about to fall very great snakes have fallen to the fire Takshaka hides in Indra Loka he is about to fall but because of his boon given by Janamejaya to Astika he is uh, you know, spared 
his life. So this is Astika Parva.